All right, so I am set now. I'm going to try and show you what I'm doing here, but there's, I've got these little kinds of um, connections, these little grounding wires, and I do my best to crimp them to get a physical connection. Of course, that's not crimping. Let's see if I can find my actual pliers somewhere over here. No, I don't see them. Where did I put them? Well, you know, this will also work as a crimper as well, like this. So I just want to try and physically tighten that around the wire. Oh. Whoops. All right. There we go. So now I have a physical connection, but I also like to follow that up with some solder as well to try and keep it from... Um, coming loose at some point later. So I'm just trying to find a way to get this to hold still for me. Oh yeah, I've got some. So this is something, by the way, for amp building that is very invaluable to have around, is a little bit of a hemostat type thing here, because you can clamp things down very easily. So I'm going to get my solder and my iron, and just to touch that guy up with some solder as well. So it like locks it mechanically as well. And there we are. I'll let that cool down and then I can, that's gonna be my anchor point. And the way I'm gonna anchor this is, I drilled a couple of holes in the chassis down under here. I don't know how visible they are, but they're just right down in here. I'm gonna put this bolt down through this furthest one over and I'm gonna bring it up kind of at an angle here so I can wrap this resistor around it and then I'll bring it back across here you know, across the back so that I can anchor any of the grounds that need to across that as well. All right. So my ground will need to go all the way down and stop at this uh, last volume pot, which is just right here, kind of the edge of the screen. I'm gonna hook it into that. So it'll come down and around and then I'll anchor it into that, but it'll stop there and that will give it a nice stable hold. So first thing first will be to now give myself a nice bend. Now another thing I've learned through experience is that any of this kind of wire that's sitting exposed to the air does tend to build up some uh, oxidation which makes it hard to get a good solder connection. So I'm also going to take a small amount of sandpaper and try and sand the length of this really quickly just to try and remove any oxidation. So you'll see here I'm just getting a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and I'm going to just sand it down the whole length of it to try and shine it up and make it so that it will accept my uh, solder a lot better. Um, because I've had problems where I, I realized that, like as I was monkeying with things I had bad solder connections and I reheated and reflowed the areas and it still wouldn't work but if I kind of scraped it up good it all of a sudden started working a lot better. So I'm just removing as much of the oxidation as I can all the way down the length of this thing so I can get it to have a really good ground connection. And that looks a lot shinier now too, so. I'm gonna try and use these pliers to get this down there a little bit better because of this, the tightness of this angle. There we go. And now the nut. Oh, darn it. I had to bump it. The one thing I need to actually have here is a screwdriver so I can screw it in once I get it there. So let me grab a screwdriver. So I now have everything ready. All these little tiny details can be a pain in the butt.
All right, that's nice and tight. All right, then what I'm gonna do now is carefully run this guy down until I reach this point, which is my grounding point for my, actually I might have bent that a little early. And then anywhere I need to ground, like here, or this one I'll put in there, and then I'll, any, anywhere else I need to ground, I will just run a short jumper wire. But that'll be my grounding bus across this point. But then, and then this, this ground, for example, can connect to that grounding bus just fine. Uh, but these ground, and then this grounding bus can connect to that grounding bus as well. But these two, again, like I said, I'm gonna connect them to a different one. This is for the power, and this is for the phase inverter. Now, I think Slucky had them separate. I only have one remaining uh, well, I might have another I have to look for, but I only have one more of these remaining kind of eyelet pieces. But we'll see if I can get that done real quick here. Let me first cut this now. I want it to be a decent looking distance, so. All right. And where did I put my pliers? There we go. I'm gonna put a little bend up on this guy because I want it to fit perfectly like that, which it does now. So, now I will solder that in, and I don't know if that's visible on screen. It is barely. So, um, just right on the edge of the screen there, you can see I'm gonna put some solder on this guy and get it nice and connected. Oops, my hand's in the way. So now we have a good ground there. Again, I've told you guys uh, before, but it never hurts to do a quick continuity test. Just connect your to any grounding point like this and test. Getting ground there, getting ground here, here, right? So uh, then once I solder these, I'll want to test off the actual physical grounding bus as well. That's one of those, when I'm really really done and everything looks like it's ready i go through and take some time to go back and measure resistors make sure the resistors are right measure capacitors make sure they seem okay now capacitors can be tricky because once they're in circuit they don't you can't measure them but you can read them since they have numbers on them resistors you can read the stripes but as you've seen before i sometimes get confused and anybody can get confused by those coloring so it's better instead to measure with those and be sure that you're good uh you also do continuity tests like for example you might want to just make sure you're not doing pin to pin on accident right um, I did jumper between here and here, so that's good, right? So you just check any of those kinds of things as you, uh, as you're, once you're done putting it all together. But uh, for right now, finish my grounding. So let me continue with that process. This one, I basically don't need a, a huge amount of wire. I've heard a lot of different stories about this. I don't know what the best is, but I know that what has worked for me uh, is that I give myself a lot of lead and I strip back so that I can wrap it around several times. Some people will say, oh, that that's a real pain in the butt to undo the wire later if you want to. Uh, maybe so, but from my experience, especially some of these kinds of connections that are a permanent connection anyway, you want them as rock solid as you can get so that there's a solid physical connection as well as the, um, what do you call it? The, soldered connection you double you double the, the solder is is insurance for what should be a good solid physical connection so all right i'm going to go ahead solder that guy so that we'll have that ground done All right, so what I'm talking about is down here. I've just kind of pushed the wire down to see about where I want it to go. I'm trying to decide, I might run it under as well, but I need to ground that. And then the same thing with this guy, I wanna...
So those are two ground wires. And for now, my intention is gonna be to do the same thing I did before. Um, actually, now that I have it under there, I realize I need them back out long enough to get the end on it. So I will do the same thing I did before where I get to where I think I need. I'm gonna give myself a little extra room. I'm gonna cut about here. I'm gonna strip them. What I'll do here is give myself a lot of room. And I will wind one of them tightly around it. Because my idea here is gonna be it will be soldered. And then I'll put the end on it, crimp that and solder that as well. And then I'll poke those underneath. I also will take time to go back and go over it again. I'm not gonna go through over it on in full detail here, because that's just boring, but just to double check, I did not accidentally mix up something, do something wrong, connect something incorrectly. There's an actual technique that's shown on the forums that shows that if you go through very carefully and run through every single connection with a magic marker and cross it off on a printout to make sure you physically double check that those match what the layout says, then you're good and that's the best way to do that. Grounds are good, so I'm gonna lock these guys down out of the way. This is now one last thing to do, which is to get a sense of my, where I wanna put my hole for this grounding, or for this foot switch. So I'm working on a hole right here. Just right in here. Look, I've uh, accidentally removed my ground for my two. You know what, that, that's gonna work though because what I can do, I had a ground here for my 200 ohms, but I will instead attach those into the same ground I'm gonna use, I'm gonna jump our ground across from here to here for, the, uh, for this guy, so. All right. I like to also, again, this is one of those things that I sometimes have messed up. So it's not a bad idea to test continuity between what you want as your ground and tip. So this is the tip. And I'm gonna just test it. That is tip as I thought. And this is ground over here. So, and if I test to ground, just touch ground. You get a decent ground just from it being connected and it's working. But you know, uh, that's why I'm gonna make a physical ground to here as well. Because sometimes these bolts will come a little loose, or these nuts, I mean, and then you don't have a ground anymore, and it will kind of suck to lose your ground and have things not work anymore. So then I'm going to do another ground. Of course, I might go down this way because I've got so much going on here. As I mentioned, you want to kind of, um, I'm going to want to kind of adjust this away so that when the jack goes in, it touches there but won't have any restrictions of the wires. At that point, guys, She's done. I'm gonna have to tip her upside down and shake out all the little bits and pieces. I'm gonna go through and take some time to double check all of these connections, make sure they look right. Uh, again, I'm gonna, as I told you, I'm gonna do, I like to do a little bit of a sanity check where I touch a ground into the chassis somewhere, doesn't matter where, 
and try some of these points on the bus that's supposed to be grounded, like here. And I, I don't, if you can see what I'm doing there, I'm not, I'm not touching to the wire that's supposed to be grounded only, I'm touching on the leg away from it. That guarantees continuity through the leg, into the turret, through the solder connection of the turret, and then turret to the ground. So you get multiple kind of checks by being careful about that. That's why I like to go as far away as possible and touch onto the actual legs of things. So you can see this, this um, right here, the bottom of this cap, it, it's grounded. So that is uh, looking good for my grounds. Um, trying to think if there's anywhere else I want to check. Oh, I do need to finish a couple of grounding leads um, because the both volume pots need a ground and the depth pot need a ground. So I need a ground from here to here and then from here to here. I did get that one already, but I haven't gotten that one yet. So I'm gonna quickly pull those together and get those grounded. And this is going to be the end. Um, with the building part, it doesn't mean there's not gonna be some more work on the troubleshooting part, because rarely does an amp finish completely first try without some weird thing being off. But, as far as I can tell, that's, uh, that is about as far as we need to go for tonight. I will uh, come back to this and do my testing and validating after I finish all of that. We're gonna turn it on and try it out. So, uh, wish me luck everybody on that first trial, but uh, I'm gonna cut her off for now and uh, we'll talk to you soon.